The True Project presents. <laughs> Tiki, you gonna go get her or are you just gonna stare at her? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Come on, Tiki. Welcome to my crib. <gasps> Tiki, are you ready? All right, so there it is. <laughs> Look at how awful this is. Because <laughs> this is what she does. She finds the biggest mud puddle. Cheeky. <laughs> All right, Nugget. So because of the dorm that I live in, it's a walk through to the bathroom, so we have to go through Molly's room. And of course, Molly has a white rug, so that's fine. This used to be white. All right. So what we have found is playing relaxing tunes helps. <laughs> so we play either my nonprofit board favorites or coffee break. You know, some good vibes. All right. Let's see if she'll do it even with a crown. Tiki, go in the back. Good girl. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be a little blunt, a little open and honest because I believe in not sugarcoating your story. Um, since being at Harvard, I have had two instances where um, I very nearly killed myself. And, you know, it, in a span of only a few years, the fact that it's happened twice, and, you know, I've been on medication, I do therapy, and all of those are great things that really work for me, but we thought, let's get another tool in the toolbox, and that's when I got Tiki. And since getting Tiki, the culmination of all of those tools to stay healthy, I have never felt better. <laughs> Have I told you the story about this? Mm -hmm, go ahead. Um, this is, if you can see my scars, they're very faint now, which is very exciting. I think that one will stay forever. Um, but anyway, so this was four years ago. Um, I admitted myself to a psychiatric hospital. My best friend at the time, she wrote on my wrist when I got in there, loved. And that kind of became my mantra, that no matter what, I am loved, even if it's just by me loving myself. So the second I got out of the hospital, I was like, I'm getting this tattooed. She wrote it down, and this is her writing, on my wrist with my scars, so always remind me. And you know, this will always, always have a special place in my heart, for sure. <laughs> Pull open the one that's unlocked. Well, we were in Shake Shack yesterday, and the girls were doing really well, ignoring all the fries on the ground and stuff. Um, and I don't know what it was, but Tiki let out a little, whoop, little yip, and 
I immediately grabbed her leash and I said, nope. And then I made her refocus back on me and I corrected the behavior. That's what really sets apart a good service dog team is not that you have a perfect dog, it's that you have a perfect team that is willing to work through mistakes and constantly improve. So I know she's never gonna be perfect, but I also know that she's always gonna be excited to try to make sure that she stays on task and that she'll listen to me and get back to focus. Let's try again. Let's try again. Yes! Part of the reason why I have Tiki is because of the disabilities that I struggle with. So both psychiatric and uh, neurological disabilities. The main training aspects are keeping me healthy and safe through a variety of tasks, including but not limited to interruption, DPT, which is deep pressure therapy, and brace. Brace. Yes. Good girl! Good job, Nugget! By the way, since the last time I saw you, I taught her another trick. Cause it's like not that big of a deal, but like it's so cute. Tiki, watch out. Down, down. Tiki, head down. Yes, good girl! So, to get back into work mode, I would say we do two things. One is even though service dogs aren't required to wear vests, I find that the vest is really, really helpful just for the dog itself, not even thinking about the public. So um, I put Tiki's vest on and I say work while I do that. And then I don't have to do this, but I also like to do when I put it on, I go, you is smart, you is beautiful, because um, you'd want to make work a really pleasant experience. So I don't go work, I say work and then get her excited to do it. Um, and then once her vest is on, she is much calmer in work mode. difficult not to pet Tiki when Tiki's working. <laughs> I love seeing like, I don't know. I haven't seen Tiki not working. So I only know like the calm kind of like partner in crime type thing. So as you know, um, Tiki's a crazy little girl when she's off duty. She is only nine months old and she likes to remind me that as a puppy, she can go on rampages. <laughs> so it's really important that I mark when she's working and when she's not. Because you know, after a long day of working, going to classes with me, tasking, making sure I'm okay, like uh, constantly paying attention, it's really important that she can blow off some steam and play with the nine other dogs that live here. For invisible disabilities, like I know before I had a service dog, like you know, you picture service dogs for being for blind people 
or people in a wheelchair. Like, that's just kind of... I don't even know why that's what I thought before I got one. Maybe it's because that's how society portrayed it. I don't know. Anyway, it's really important to have accurate representation and to educate pe- white, the wider community that people with invisible disabilities need service dogs too. Like not even service, they just need help as well. <laughs> when I have my service dog and I'm walking around and you don't see anything wrong with me, it's so important that people don't give in to that type of stigma surrounding um, invisible, invisible illnesses. It's not that I'm using a crutch, I have another tool in my toolbox to help me throughout my day. So give the same amount of respect to someone who's externally, visibly battling something and someone who can be intrinsically battling something. Um, Because I know I could have been a much healthier person had I known that at a younger age and had I been treated like that at a younger age. We should be treating it the same exact way. One, two, three, four.